This is the Tribune podcast of this day, 20th of uh, April, with Eamon McFadden and myself, John McAteer, here, and Francis Dever is standing in today for the first time because Declan Kerr is not available, and he will be back here next week. So we're going to skirt around what's in the Tribune. First of all, we're going to look at some of the stuff that's been making the news since we were with you before. Uh, just reading the piece in The Independent this morning, Eamon, where it's all about what you can afford and what you can't. Mm. And this is a Dublin teacher who went to Dubai nine years ago and has no intention of coming back. And one of the one of the things that he's highlighting, apart from the conditions, is the fact that he has rent-free accommodation worth 15 grand a year. And he has no intention of coming back. I mean, what does that say for for, 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 for graduates who are just going to emigrate? Mm. I, I know the Kenans have been in Dubai a lifetime, so things mustn't be too bad there. Too much longer by the looks of it. Well, I wouldn't bet on that, can you? Well, there's yeah. no pensions rights when it comes back. I reckon Dubai has no pension rights out there. But sure, is everything else. But uh, when you when you see when you back see with the cart load of money, will they not? And do they do they are they ta- they're tax free as well? Is that correct? The Kenans uh, wouldn't be paying tax for such money. Teachers are tax free. Teachers are tax free. I shouldn't say that about the Kenans because I shouldn't be talking about things that I know very little about, apart from a read but, and the red tops. Hmm. But I mean, but that's a very attractive for your any young graduate, John. When you the way you put it there, you know, to to get to know that your cost of living is going to be offset like that. But is that a false economy in some ways? But is it? Yeah. You know, you're going to go back with a lot of money. Yeah. You're going to save a lot of money because where else do you spend it? Yeah. You're going to have a couple of free trips home in the year. Mm. Uh, you're probably doing other things when you're out there as well. You're probably doing grinds and doing all that kind of stuff when you're well, teaching English. Yeah. So you're probably earning circa profit wise maybe 100 grand a year if, if, if you push yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you do 10 years out there, you're and tipping on being a millionaire. And and new people during the uh, during the crash who went out there who had gotten into a negative equity and all that type of thing, and again, some of them were doing three four years and coming back in a situation where they're they're kind of resolved their financial issues in their house. You know, there's no long term plan, but day. but I suppose that's maybe the opportunity. As you say, John, there probably isn't a great deal to more to do if you can work hard and get your trips out of there. I suppose you're also in a hub where you can explore all that part of the world if you want to as well but you have to work hard yeah I think so but people will probably work twice as hard here hmm. and have very little at the end of it because the tax man has taken a fair shot of it out of us Aye. we're working all our lives for the tax man mm-hmm, mm-hmm. well you see when the property prices are going or even yeah. rental prices hey, if, but if, you're, if, you, if you had a factor that cost into any job to relocate she'd be you know you, you're mm. hiding to nothing really you know and it's it's it, it seems to be the country over because I was like at the weekend I but just where I was in Limerick and I was in Galway and I was yeah. chatting to people. The, the, you, someone was saying you can't even you can barely rent a house in the centre of Limerick Centre. You can, and oh, it's the, too expensive here. Yeah, mm-hmm. and, and Galway's yeah. fallen suit. So like I mean, yeah. You, but we don't have houses. We simply don't have houses. And that's why they're so expensive. Yeah. That's why they're yeah. holding their value so big. Because the developers are controlling the market as always. Mm-hmm. Uh, we just saw there for, for Bartra. They got a planning decision in their favour on what close to six hundred houses that were supposed to be part of social housing, and they appealed that, yeah. and they actually won it. And the minister has uh, has allowed them to sell those houses, uh, uh, just at the uh, at whatever value they can get for them. Mm-hmm. So, like, we are not able to manage houses, but I suppose the other exciting story, if you're into music, is Ed Sheeran is here in Ireland, and he played Wheelands last night, Tuesday night, and uh, they were queuing from two thirty in the morning. To get into Wheelands. To get into Wheelands. And I heard Barry Lennon on, 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 on drive time yesterday evening on RTE talking to, to some of them who had come over from Holland and places like that. And they were so thrilled to be in Ireland, but particularly they were going to Wheelands last night and then they were going on to the Croke Park concert later yeah, on this weekend. Some difference in capacity in those two places. Uh, must but he does that kind of thing. Uh, he does that kind of thing. That's a big part of it. The um, other big thing that, that we missed when we were away was Dr. Tony Holland's appointment and his, his professorship at Trinity College that could cost 20 million had he stayed for 10 years. Uh-huh. Now, Jesus Christ, I don't know what we're doing in this country, but I mean, the well, teacher didn't know about it. It wasn't an appointment or a self-appointment? He didn't have to go to Dubai, anyway. Mm. Uh, well, there's going to be, there's going to be, a, there's going to be an earth uh, meeting of the Finance Committee. They're seeking all the documentation. And a Mark Quinn lady, uh, the outgoing chief 
the chief executive of, of the Institute of uh, of uh, what is it, directors. Mm. She's going to head up this investigation, and and what will we learn from it? Because Robert, what there's probably legislation there in the uh, 1997 legislation where those heads of departments like like Robert Watt mm-hmm. can claim privilege to go above and beyond the government and making decisions and this is what's going to come to the fore I believe mm. yet the politicians are, are are shouting that they heard nothing and didn't know anything and didn't do anything about it mm-hmm. but were they entitled to it this is one of the big questions that's going to arise because those were the very boys that gave the, the heads of the departments, and there's eight or nine of them, of importance in the country, mm. that they are more powerful actually than the elected representatives. Yeah. Maybe that's not a bad thing. We're also going to look, Francis, at the Ukrainian ref, uh, refugees, because we have numbers of them here in Mufford. You're yeah, hardly aware that there's 40 of them, is there? Uh, there's 40 and a few children. Is there, was there, and is there more due to, to, to arrive as well? Well, you hear all these rumours of different houses been prepared and yeah. six houses down the bottom of the town that so many things that people come in these houses and are melting the refugees may be coming to so there probably will be more there has to be more yeah if there's them kind of facilities I think that I even heard a statistic this morning they say that over the over the Easter weekend there was something I don't know if I'm quoting this correctly but there was something like 5,000 arrived over over that sort of Easter period alone or several thousand anyway um yeah, and they have to be put somewhere, you know, because oh, yeah. they're chatting now that they're saying that they're going to make places like sporting facilities and Mill Street and all these kind of places available. Yeah. But they're saying you can't, you know, they don't want to go down that road of kind of this mass, Aye. kind of almost refugee Aye. camp style of of, of Jack place. Chambers was calling Jack Chambers, the sports manager, was calling the sports organisations to come up and give them sort of sporting facilities available with yeah. showers and stuff. And but I mean, if you have. 10 or 12 families going into a sporting facility like a community centre say like Don Fanny or Fanny or any of those uh, places or <coughs> where, is, where are you going to provide any privacy or accommodation is that not a bit ludicrous uh, any bit of is, is it, just, is, is it not very very silly because, well it's you know, been on in the government they just don't seem to throw out these ideas hoping that something more different will develop or something they don't care yeah, well. in a way I don't think they're getting the response that they expected no, though, from, from no, a suitable no. accommodation from people volunteering. You see, initially, yeah. those first days in which everybody thought three weeks, this is going to be over. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, probably if, if they're here for three months, it'll be the max, but not not likely three months, less. Now it could be three years. It could three be years. 23 uh, years. Yeah. Nobody knows. You know, I do feel sorry for it, r- people like y- Ukrainians here uh, in Milford and places like that, very quiet. Uh, we haven't seen much of them out and about, but she yeah. asked the question, where do they go? Yeah. They're 2,000 miles from home. And their language barrier will be there, so they'll be sticking with their own community, you know. Plus they're very, very worried about what's going on at home. Ah, it's shocking. They're they're worried, they're like if was, we were in the same boat, she'd be watching every news bulletin. But yeah. I mean, the reality yeah, is that we were talking well. loudly a couple of weeks back about the possibility of taking in 200,000 of them. Mm. We now have, a, by the end of this month, we expect to have about 40,000 housed. Mm. Now, we're probably stretching it beyond that point. I mean, to put them in tents out in Gormanstown in County Meath would seem to be a very, very bad idea. Ah, it'd be awful. It'd be awful. Uh, a very short term thing. You do that for a week in the summertime. Ah, but only if the capacity, if they had to. But I mean, yeah. But you know, we were never obliged to take two <coughs> percent, which the government started uh, prattling and on about. That's not correct. <coughs> There's no. EU convention or regulation that stipulates that we can that we have to take any particular percentage of them. Mm-hmm. We can take what we can afford to take, and that, and where we where we can provide them with a decent accommodation. Aye. I think accommodation must be more than semi semi permanent. You know, it needs to be permanent. Yeah. At this point, but this thing about two percent is not in any convention. So, so that's a figure that they got plucked out of somewhere. Yeah, government ministers started plucking this figure. Because, in reality, we sh- I mean, if we were to take two percent of them, France by its size would be obliged to take. We would be taking maybe up to two hundred thousand, but France would be taking two point five million. Mm. So would Italy. Mm. Uh, the UK can do what they like because they're not in the. Not in the they're EU. not in the <coughs> EU. Yeah. But uh, a lot of the but Germany could probably be taking three to four million of them. Mm. So like none of this is adding up, but it's not mentioned in any. EU regulation or convention that there's any particular figure put on it. Mm. I mean, 
our, our percentage of the EU population is probably less than 1%, maybe 1.1% 1, 1 at the very most. But uh, they're going to keep coming because things are not going to get any better in the short term in, 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 in Ukraine. Yeah. Because that Donbass region is going to be pounded like nothing has been pounded since the Second World War. And it's absolutely shocking to watch it. Yeah. As I said here one week, watching it is far too traumatic, so <coughs> don't don't be watching it. That's you're not, criminal, you're so. not going to watch anything. Yeah. 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 Someday, I suppose, Putin will be charged with a war crime if he can be found alive. Mm. Uh, and I wouldn't rule that out. <coughs> but he, he has strong backing in inside the... Inside the for now. army, for now, uh, for now you don't yeah. know. sanctions yeah. will will bite, yeah. you know. You wonder, and it'll have to come from within, really, because he's. It, it seems like he's quite unreachable where he is, but he's also sort of incommunicado in the sense that no. The one sanctions works. are not working, really, because the oil is still flowing. Yeah. Germany's uh, probably they probably cut their cut their uh, their import by about twenty to twenty five percent. but the, that's very very low. They maintain that the the the, the price that they're. The, the Europe is paying back into Russia for is sort of co is covering the cost of the war on a daily basis. So that you you know the, you can, we're going to sanction them left right and but uh, it's costing a, a billion apparently it's a billion a week or something like this to run for Russia to the Russian war uh, and they're paying I think it was Germany alone is paying them a billion a week or something you know. The rest of the world is going to have to pay trillions and trillions of dollars and euros to rebuild Ukraine. Uh, hmm? Ukraine has a massive massive debt as an underperforming country. Their debt needs to be sh scrapped immediately. There's not a mention of that being made anywhere. The Ukraine is one of the poorest countries on earth that has one of the biggest deficits as well of borrowing because the country has been badly managed and badly run ever since 1991, since, since uh, the breakup of the USSR. Mm -hmm. And they've had, they've had a, a various number of leaders that were accused of being more, one more corrupt than the other. <clears throat> but I mean, who should we be talking? <laughs> We're going to go on. Easter ceremonies, Francis, you were out and about at church for the first time in three years, I believe. Uh, I was out early in the morning. I was at Glen Bar, up the way of the cross at six o'clock in the morning. Father Martin Collum had mass there. And uh, Maggie McAteer, who was late, but she got there with the guitar. She Would she ever be early for anything? Oh, no, she does all right at times. She'd love the choir, though. The choir were beautiful. It was lovely, actually, the sunrise on the mountain there. there. Paints a picture, didn't they? Uh, and then went down to Port Salon, then to the to uh, Church of Ireland, Reverend Stanley Johnson, at seven o'clock. So there was a full tide was on there. It was beautiful, <laughs> and the pier just the tide was just going right up to the Sarah's restaurant. It was, oh, it was there's no beach at all to be seen. Just the water. Just the water, and it was lovely and calm, and uh, there was nice, nice music down there and all, and it was nice, very nice, very peaceful. Good mm -hmm. crowds out and about was there at that hour. Ah, not too bad either, good enough. I, uh, it's a bit early, though, like 6 o'clock and 7 o'clock. But It used to be 5 o'clock in Glenvar, which was always very exciting. Uh, People would walk up, kind of a tourist type thing. Uh, it was the same last time you walked yeah. from the bottom up, like it was about a 20-minute walk, it was grand. Uh, There's 15 stations across. And then, I, su them. Uh. I suppose, I think religious services around the country were very widely attended. I hadn't planned to go to Doc Moore to St. Devalix Well, he's our patron saint and fan it. And I got a puncture on the way down and couldn't get the spare wheel out of the boot. I had never been out since I got the car. <laughs> Lots of help and thanks to all of you who came out to give me a hand to get back on the road, which took about an hour and 15 minutes, and burst a tyre. Thank you, Donegal County Council. It cost quite 100 euros, 150 <laughs> to, euro. to uh, replace people. it. Matt, people's only wanted money out of it. <laughs> <laughs> but we were out. We'll, we have a lot of coverage of the uh, Easter Sunday commemorations at Drumbo and Guidor and Fanad. Carrigart and Easter Monday, and, uh, Easter Monday as well. A uh, whole new buzz of activity amongst the, Shin, the younger generation of Sinn Féin. It was very palpable down at Kindrum. And there was a Kira Ferguson, MLA from Derry, who replaced Martina Anderson. Very, very good speaker. Uh, very well organised, very well run. And uh, I would imagine that no other party in the country would attempt to hold a function of that kind. There was about what, close to 80 people at Kindrum. I don't think any other party would be fit to muster eight people at a country crossroads on a Sunday afternoon or on Monday afternoon <coughs> at three o'clock. Mm. So yeah, Sinn Féin have big, have big support and it seems to be getting bigger. Yeah, well, the mobilising you can have a younger mm. following now maybe. 
Oh, they've, like that 18 to 30, early 30s age group, they were out, notably out in big strength. And they all had specific roles. Things were done slightly differently, you know, they were much more organised and there was less ceremony, you know. And the funny thing about them is, is that a lot of them 18 to 30 year olds, their families are all traditional Fianna Fáil, Fianna Gael, Blaney's. And mobilise a new, a new. So there's, there, the, young ones are going, the young ones are joining Sinn Féin, whereas mm. the parents are the traditional parties, so that's going to be scary for the traditional parties for the next 20 years, yeah. if that keeps going. Yeah. The reality is that probably Sinn Féin is so high in the opinion polls that the only way they can go really at the moment is down. Uh, you know, mm. because Mayor Martin is showing a bit of leadership. He's better showing a bit of support as, as, as well in the opinion polls. Nowhere near Sinn Féin at the moment. But there's always these issues that keep cropping up, like like Eamon Ryan's story last week about the sods of turf. And... <coughs> just hey, your granny up the chimney in case she, she's caught for for buying a bag of turf. Uh, That's embarrassing, though. All that rubbish, like, it doesn't make sense. It's just embarrassing for people to listen to that. Stopping turf cutting for like half a dozen bags of turf. A lot of people were like quitting, like people taking bags of turf around, like people were uh, selling drugs. drugs. <laughs> <laughs> it's, you know all this. Well, we reverted to the lines from the turf man from R D. That was made famous and by Dermot O'Brien of yesteryear. It was, it was, it's a very, very old Irish ballad, but it's, it's, it's very, very, it's very, um, it's very, very obvious that country hasn't moved on enough lot since that ballad was written, you know. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's, it's very apt for the time to learn it. But we're going to go to the death, both of you to the death, of Ben McFadden. Mm-hmm. Sadly passed away on Thursday. Aye, uh, we Ben passed away on Thursday after a battle there with uh, cancer after the last two years. And he was laid to rest on Easter Sunday. Funny you talk about the Easter ceremonies. And uh, it was, it was a, a, I suppose, a, a, a huge time in the community because Ben was so highly regarded. I mean, he was really was kind of devoted to the community and everyone had a great time and everyone took a great interest in his well-being and all that in his later times too. The irony of nearly all of it being that Having finally got a national recognition to, for all the work he has done, when Nationwide came to film them there back in March, and he and Bernadette and all the members of the community association had the place looking so well, Lark and Rorty had the mm-hmm. White Latin camp, and they were talking about how them few things have helped to bring the community on, and he would like to see it further. That was aired on Friday evening, just the day after he passed away, and Anne Casson even took time at the end of it to offer her sympathies to everybody on that. But it was... It was just uh, an unusual way, but Ben was so well thought of. He was he was well known for his community work. He was well known through his music. He was well known through his business. He was just Mr. Creasley in many ways. Although I suppose Arge was his absolute devoted home, and he uh, he, he wrote songs about it. And all he was that. a good musician. He was. He wrote he plenty was, of songs. He was, a, he was a general all round uh, man at work in music, and. Community, as far as community roles are concerned, you know, he was unequalled. Yeah. And may his gentle soul rest in peace in his native uh, Creasley. I have to say, need no sympathies to all the family in that because he's Indeed, uh, yeah. he'd be badly missed. But, but with that, that said, he, he said to Creasley, he said on the TV on the Friday evening, and he says, if, if that's what we can do in a couple, he says, in a few years' time, Creasley could be twice as good. And that's uh, what the challenge is now for the community, oh, you know, so there'll be plenty of ones oh, to pick we're up. We're going that. to look very quickly at a couple of stories <laughs> in the paper. Council response to members' queries on Micah. This is from the 24th of February when there was a special meeting uh, held to, to address the queries. Now, we've, we've probably done our best to give it a page. There's almost 9,000 pages. Words has come in from the councillors, full of the the uh, the template of officialdom and all that uh, and all of that stuff and references to uh, the different acts of legislation that, that that empowers local authority. And I would have to say it was a very very difficult one to to deal with, but we, we've given it our best shot. Uh, but it really does not say very much, and by way of uh, the manner that you're handed that kind of a detail. That there's no way a, a, a newspaper can actually carry that. Mm-hmm. No matter how it's presented, to you, you know, like as far as the, like we've 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 given it to two thousand words, probably half that would have been adequate. 
Yeah. It's still saying as much, you know, but uh, I don't know why they did that or what purpose they saw in it, but, you know, we're, we're going to look at the front page. We have a couple of decent stories. There are fuel tanker facility refused blind permission out at Bonnegui. You have done that story, Eamon. Mm, that's just one that um, it was, uh, a, a, was effectively an LPG uh, tank, and uh, large-scale tank and tanker f- uh, right. filling facilities and all that, but it was shot down because of its... Uh, Proximity over to Lost Willie, you can find out more about that in the in the story. Too. And also, farmers facing twenty five percent income decline. The INHFA they have called for a clear plan to protect the lamb and cattle trade this autumn, and they've warned about a serious decline in farm incomes in this sector, as a, as invariant by Chagas, which could be as high as twenty five percent. And we're also looking at a very important story in relation to a, a cardiac serious. cath lab that lies idle at Letterkenny University Hospital. Read that in the Tribune because the cath lab four years ago cost seven hundred and fifty thousand, and guess what? It's not been used. It has never it's been never used. Never been used, and it may never be used. Is that official Ireland at its very best? Read it all in the Tribune. Mm-hmm. Thanks for listening. Talk to you next week. Bye.